Good night, Fred. You know. Good night, mate. How are we all? Good, mate. Yeah, we're we're all as good as it gets, I think. Yeah. yeah it's. Uh, did yeah. you um? Were you working over the weekend, or did you have a, a decent break? Oh, I, I, me, I, I, I took the time off, basically. Yeah, I had a bit of a chill out, and um, it was time to sort of get buried in a book. So I got this big, thick book of Tom Clancy's. So oh, okay. um, it's just um, it's just nice to sort of sit back and um, read for a while, you know, rather than bloody be glued to the screen type of thing, you know. So yeah, I, I actually did the same. I um, the when I had the the surgery last week, I was chatting to the doctor, and she actually wrote a novel. So not a not a um, textbook, but a she actually, she's a published author, so I went and grabbed her book and read that over the weekend. So it was, uh, that was interesting because I, it's like normally I'll you know I'll listen to stuff or whatever else I watch videos, but it's a quite a while since I actually read a read a book, but read it about when I get it, got it on Friday, was it? Yeah, no, no, Saturday, got it on Saturday, so I finished it yesterday. So that so wasn't long. It was pretty good. So, yeah. So I'll probably start getting back into reading books again because I used to do that all the time when I was working, like when I was in corporate. Um, I'd I'd read books all the time during lunch or whatever, you know. So it was, but I haven't haven't done it for a while. It's a good escape, you know. Yep. Yeah. It's a good escape. No, so um. Hi, Paul. How are you? Well, thank you, Fred. How are you? I'm good. And Chet, Chet, welcome, buddy. Hope it's not too cold over where you are. Although the weather's probably changing over there. They're moving in the other. Yeah, it's getting cold. It's getting colder here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Day or today. yeah. probably end up out Get of up. Hey, Paul. Yes, Ray. Yeah, mate. Um, on that, um, that program of yours, the, um, Group, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. What, what, what? What's the next move from there? We, you're doing something different. Yeah, so we're um, we're in discussions. There's a group of us that are going to take the book Think and Grow Rich and apply the principles to somebody's business and watch them um, go from broke to thriving. So there's a group of us that are working together to do that. Okay. When does that start? So that's that's not scheduled yet. That's not scheduled. Um, the there's four of us are talking about it, and we're looking at probably starting. Uh, I go speak. Um, so we're doing the last Think and Grow Rich on Monday, which is just uh, with that we've gone through the whole book, so we're just having a celebration, and then perhaps the following Monday we'll do that. Um. The other thing that I'm, I'm uh, thinking of doing is probably another uh, prosperity game um, where um, people, but I, I, want, I just can't get my head around this this um, app. I'm trying to create an app so people can use the app while they while they play the game. And I just can't get my head around it. It's, it's, it's meant to be easy, but it's not that intuitive. <laughs> <laughs> You've, you've done a fair bit with it so far, though, haven't you, with the app? Yeah, I mean, um, no, like, yeah, I, I, I have. I've, I've done, um, I've done it. I probably could get some, some, something out, and see what it's like. Um, have you ever heard of Adolo? Yeah. Or not? Okay, yeah. that's the one I'm using. Because someone is, someone said that's the easiest one to use. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty intuitive too, so it's you know. Well, then I'm just not at my build. <laughs> do, do, do you um, want to share what you've done so far? No, oh, I'll show you what I've done. Um, yeah, I'll give you co-host. All right, beautiful. Let me just. There you go. All right. Okay. Let me just go to the. Um. Now, where are you? Oh, there you are. Um, 
Oh, let me try and check there. I've just got to log in. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this. Yep. Okay, so so th this is basically what people when when they come to it, um, they'll they'll tell them what day they're up to with regards to the game. All right. Okay. So every day the amount of money you get will increase by a thousand dollars. Right. So let's say it's a, a new day. All you do is you go to. Oh, why is that not working? Um, because I've got the next go. Okay, so you can see that this is day four. All right, that's your imaginary bank account balance, and that's a little video that um people can watch. Um, you know that um will help them with the mindset. And I'm thinking of that video being. Two to five minutes, maybe. You know? And so, you know, it, it, um, if you've got a coach, you know, um, people, coaches can, um, you know, participate by putting their video there, if that makes sense, right? And then, like, if you, oh, why is it not working? For some reason, that's not working now. Always the way, Paul. Murphy's Law. Always the way. Murphy's Law. Let, let me preview. All right. That will just add in another day, and then um, no, oh, that's the daily bit. So that's a new day. You just say it's today, new day. You just go yes, bang, and I'll go back and you see how it's um, added. Five, um, day number five, and on day five you get five thousand dollars. So all up you get eight thousand dollars to go out and you, you purchase something, and then you just go to purchase. Okay, and then you just go to the shop. Right, and then you, you, this is where it changes. You will find something that you want to enter into it, right? So let's say you want to, you, one of the things you were going to do was a, a helicopter ride in Dubai. You would just purchase it. Now, let's say there's two of you to that. You just add that to the cart and it does everything up for them. And then obviously I need to change the stripe and then, um, and, and, and um, it, it, then the next thing is for that three thousand five hundred four to subtract from the eight thousand dollars, so that when you go back to the new day, you know how how much money you've got. And then at the end, um, you will have a um, you know, you'll have a log of all the purchases you purchases you did over that period of time. Um, and uh, let me go. And then what I was, so I'll go to the other video. Okay, so you, you just hit purchase, whatever you want to purchase, let's go find something to purchase. Banamata Hotel. All right, um, you just find. I know, uh, just like, um, 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 how much it costs, $300. And then you just go into there. And then you just add that to the cart. You know, you've got family of four. You just do that. You add that to the cart. It, and then it does all the maths for you. And then you just purchase it. And then it adds it on there. And then the next day, um, you will just go to day number four, and you just play that for a period of thirty days, and that will change. That will change the offering you're giving to the universe mentally. So instead of focusing on the money you've got now coming in, you're starting to focus on more money than what you've got. So you start to attract more money to you, and that's the theory behind it all. So I think that the, the, the whole idea for it's I I've had a chat with Paul about it before and I, the the whole idea, the concept is to get you past your money block. So you're spending this yeah. fictitious amount of money. 
um, over days and you just keep getting more money from the, from somewhere, whether it's the universe or whatever it is, and you've got to spend it. That's the focus of the game. So, uh, and you go off and find these, you know, whether it's pictures on the internet and you create your own products you got to purchase. So, and at the end of the 30 days, theoretically, you've got over all of this money because you actually spend stuff and you find how hard it is to actually spend money. Because when you get up and you're given $10,000 at the end of the day, it's pretty hard to work out what to spend it on yeah. if, it, if you've got everything you need. So one of the one of the things that came out in the first week with uh, with the people who played it was people actually felt guilty about having money and and living a lifestyle of their choice. And um, and when you have that guilt, it, that's what stops you from going out and living the lifestyle of your choice. And you now you talk to people like, "No, I won't feel guilty," but it's only, you know, that was a, a, a big significant factor that came into it, you know. I mean, you know, I, I played with Sally, Nicolette, Allison, um, and another guy from America, um, Gregory. The four of us played for it. And it was just amazing that that was the first thing that came up was I felt guilty having all this money, so I'm living my life of choice and um, nobody else is, and I'm not in suffering anymore, and people were feeling guilty about that. And so once we brought that to the attention, people could stop feeling guilty about living the lifestyle. I mean, I, I literally had a client on Monday where we, we sat down with him, and, um, and I said, what's your perfect lifestyle? And so he's just got an inheritance from his mother. And... Um, he said, well, my perfect lifestyle is to have a motorbike so that I can put a, a, a tent on the back and just go and, and, and do what I want to do. But I feel guilty about spending $20,000 on this motorbike. And I said, well, but that's your, that's, once you've got this, this is your perfect lifestyle. You can spend $20,000, put the rest aside for investments. Why don't you just start living your lifestyle today? Because that's what people want to do. They want to have the perfect lifestyle. But there's so much guilt around living it. It's amazing. Oh, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, no, it does. Oh. I'm, I'm really interested, in, like, when you finish it, because what, like, what Paul has done, and this is probably interesting as well, just from a different aspect, but what he's actually done is they, they played the game um, online without, without the app, right? So they... They actually did it online and just bought stuff and kept kept the record of it, a physical record of it, over the what well, probably started a couple of months ago. Um, as part we did of, it for a month, yeah, yeah. So, but at, at the end of that, Paul's decided to build the app because he got a good reaction out of it. So, um, you know, when when it's released, hopefully we'll get a copy of it and we can start spreading the word about it. But suddenly, just by doing one thing, it's opened up another door. You know, so they they read the book. They did the game, and now there's an app in the works. So it just shows you what can happen. Like if you know, you, you and I'm guessing Paul, if somebody had to said to you twelve months ago that you'd be writing an app and doing some programming, that you'd go, well, you've got rocks in your head. <laughs> so well, if somebody said twelve months ago you'd start your own Facebook group, oh, and they said you've got rocks in your head, that's not what I wanted to do. But that's what um, you know, like because I've been going through thinking grow rich. Um, and you know, that's such a powerful book. Um, you don't just go through it once, you study it intensely. Um, I think that's the greatest book ever written on wealth, money and wealth creation. Um, because it's all about your, your thought. It's just such a powerful thing. Everything you send out into the ether comes back to you. So, you know, um, and, you know, just from just continuously going through that book, this is where I'll, um, th th this is the direction it's taking me in, which is really interesting, very exciting. Um, you know, and uh, I started a YouTube channel as well, and you know, so lo lots of little things are happening. Um, however, I've still got my financial planning business that I am committed to. So, yeah. yeah. Has anybody else got any questions for Paul? No, no, no. Well, with the group that you good morning everybody. Sorry. Yeah. With your group with the Think and Grow Rich, um yeah. you also look at things like uh, the magic of thinking big. 
Yeah, uh, it, it's actually called I Choose More Money. So I've actually changed it to I Choose More Money. Mm. Um, you know, the, 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 the actual game, um, the prosperity game that I was talking about, came from a book, um, Ask and It Is Given. Um, so that's the um, uh, Esther and Jerry Hicks. So that's a famous book out there. Um, Bob Proctor, um, I'm going, I'm listening to Bob Proctor right now. Bob Proctor's got You Were Born Rich. But one thing about Bob Proctor is he keeps referring back to Napoleon Hill. And, and, and now that, now that I've studied Napoleon Hill and Bob Proctor's referring back to it, um, it, it's just really amazing how everybody that has gone on to big things in this, in, in this field, Actually had a, a grounding in thinking grow rich. Even Anthony Robbins had um, his, his grounding in that. Um, Bob Proctor, uh, Brian Tracy, I'm sure did too. Zig Ziglar, all of those. Um, it all comes back to um, Napoleon Hill's thinking grow rich. And thinking grow rich, just um, when you think of it, um, uh, thinking grow rich was actually written in the Depression when Napoleon Hill got access to the five. 100 richest Americans in the world at that time. And he got to interview them and find out what they were doing that made them successful during the depression. And he put this, and he put this down into his book and he's got, um, was it 13 philosophies that you follow? Um, and it, it's really, um, and, and it's, it's just, a, it's the Bible for, um, how to get your mindset right to make and attract money. An interesting yeah. fact about thinking grow rich. Sorry, when Paul. you wrote it, yeah, just, sorry, just um, when you actually wrote it in the depression, okay, uh, when he pulled the manuscript out, he realized he wrote it during the depression and his mindset when he wrote it was a depression mindset. So he actually got out his typewriter when things were better and rewrote it word for word so they did have, have a different um, vibration or offering. So what, what, what did you want to ask, Peter? Well, it wasn't. I was just going to say that um, Think and Grow Rich, as you said, was written many years ago, okay? The principles are evergreen. There's no doubt about that. But but some people have difficulty in implementing what it's all about. I mean, it, it's quite a challenge when it comes to paradigms and subconscious, et cetera, right? And so there's a thing I found called magic in your mind, which mm-hmm. is which is part of the Proctor Gallag- Gallagher Institute. Yeah. And that helps people to understand and appreciate and bring Think and Grow Rich to the 21st century. That's what I'm trying to get at. Uh, thank you. As I said, I, I was listening to um, Bob Proctor. As, um, you were born rich. Absolutely. And I think that that's going to be our project afterwards is uh, the people that studied it have mm. studied Think and Grow Rich and we understand the principles. And um, I know when I first read the book Think and Grow Rich, I hated it because it was so confronting. But 20 years later, I got my head around it and said, well, now I've got to learn how to create a mastermind group alliance and persistence is so important and design mm. and obsessive. Mm. You know, um, all these like little principles that you, you uh, you, if you read the book once, it's interesting, but there's 13 of them. You know, you, you might just pick up a little bit. Um, and I, I know that Bob Proctor, the interesting fact about Bob Proctor is he would take a page of Think and Grow Rich and read it a thousand times. That's what, that's how he got all that knowledge installed, installed into him. And then mm-hmm. he managed to transfer it to, to, um, cause his writing is a little bit old passion. I, I actually did a thing with which um think of Rich many years ago. Um was a bit interesting. I did it was actually through mentoring for free. We did it for three years. We had to read a chapter every week and write about it. And then we had people talking about it. Yeah, and I know so right. when I first wrote those my friend won that book that first time to what I was doing after three years was I was a very different person. Yeah. It's well that's ex- over and over again. Yeah. How we look at ourselves and change, yeah. Well, that's, that's the program we've just run in my group is, uh, we took a chapter a week. We read the chapter and then we discussed it as a group. Yeah. And, and, 
yeah, it, it was very. That, uh, it's confronting a lot of people dropped out. <laughs> But those well, it's, there. it's a book to be studied, not to be read. No. Yeah, because no. what I found when I did it, I can remember one particular person actually, we, they used to choose who's, who they're going to read, about six of them. And there's one person wrote a chat, wrote the particular chapter, and I was thinking, I could have written it from word to word. It made you start looking. You know, you start listening, you think, God, yeah, I can see that in myself. I can see that in my life. Like, yeah. And you say it's a, it's a study. It's not just a book to read like a lot of these other um, develop, personal development books. Yeah, absolutely. It opens, and, and it opens you up and it makes you start looking at things differently, I found when I did it. That, that's why I, I've done it and that's why I've been doing it so intensely. And, um, yeah, I still, every night I read to my son thinking grow rich. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> He, he, can't, he can't fall asleep without it now. No, two nights ago, he, um, he said, I said, do I want to read it? He said, I don't care. I don't know. I, said, I just read him two pages. And then he walked out later and said, no, you've got to read the whole chapter. So um, the, the one chapter that is recommended to read all the time is the one of auto-suggestion, where um, you know, your self-talk is so important. And it's 10 pages, so it's not a, a long chapter. And um, I've read that to my son over 50 times now. Wow. <laughs> yeah. How old is your son, Paul? He's nine years old. He's even here, yeah. Um, but, but, uh, you imagine the seed that that's going to implant, can't you? Oh, imagine yeah, if, we, I mean, if, we, if we were that sort of age and heard about this stuff and listened to it, wouldn't we all be very different people? Yeah. 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 What a good I, dad you are, Paul. Yeah, but the older one, as I, um, he, he, because the younger one still sleeps with us, and he insists, and he is, yeah, he, he, I mean, I, I want to read to him every night anyway, but I want to try and read to both of them, but they sleep in different rooms. So the older one will, you'll have to live off his younger brother when he becomes multi. <laughs> oh, interesting fact, you, you all, um, heard of Elon Musk. Yeah, you right? know he's the world's richest man, right? You mm -hmm. know he's South African, right? Um, I discovered what school he went to. He went to Bryanston High, which is actually not too far where I live. I actually used to drive past that school to get to to um my school. So and um he's just a little bit younger than me, so I'm very Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> you probably passed him in the street and didn't know. Oh, he's three years old. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've been told he's got Asperger's um, disease. Um, I don't, I don't know if that's true or not. But Asperger's, yeah, disease. I've heard he's had Asperger's, yeah, yeah. And I've, I've actually had a client with Asperger's, and Asperger's just means that um, you are exceptionally smart. You're off the scale smart, but socially you're incompetent. Yeah. Um, and um, so, so you know. In, in, the, the client that I had that had Asperger's was just off the client smart, but socially was incompetent, um, but had no idea about money. His wife had to take over the money aspect. Interesting thing about Asperger's is that they can learn the social skills because they're so good. If you can break down the steps, they can they can acquire the skills because they're very good with logic. So if you can say to them, okay, when you see someone with this expression, that means whatever, that means they're sad, that means they're angry, that means they're, and then you can go into mo more depth with emotions which show differently on different faces. People with Asperger's often become very emotionally intelligent, yeah. even well, though it doesn't come naturally. Well, I mean, what one of the um, things that they were talking about, Elon Musk, is when you took over Twitter, just the way it just got rid of everybody. It just didn't seem to have a... And I said, well, that's just business. But some people seem to think that the world owes them a living, whereas, in fact, you, the only one that owes you a living is yourself. <laughs> yeah, nice. That's, that, that might sound like my Asperger's coaches. <laughs> <laughs> mm.
Well, that was that was magic, guys. I appreciate it. Um, I suppose we we do the mandatory. We'll go around the room and just do a, an introduction, just for the recording benefit, so that um, when people watch this on YouTube, they can actually get to understand who you are, uh, what you do, who you serve, and more importantly, who you'd want to connect with. So, um, Ray, would you like to go first? Yeah. Good morning or good afternoon. Um, from um, across the ditch here in South Canterbury. Yeah. So. Ray Treadaway from RayTreadaway.com, your new skin advocate. And today we're going to talk about something a little bit different. And this is a, a product you may not be able to see. It's a little wee pill, and it's called Cordymax. And this is, improves your lung capacity. And it uh, comes from a mushroom. And it's the, one of the very rarest products that pulls carbon dioxide out of the air and spits out oxygen and that's why it's good for your lung intake and your performance so it's called cordymax fx and if you want to look after your body you got to take care of it and give it the right tools it'll heal itself thanks right jay would you like to go next absolutely jason Wolsey from be connected world and i'm the business community builder i help business owners around the world just like yourselves Increase your profile and profitability and connect you with over 2,000 members who want to do business with you. Be Connected World Community consists of 150 online networking events a year, face-to-face -face meetings in the Gold Coast and Newcastle, an online community centre, radio station, magazine, as well as a podcast with over 7,000 subscribers. Uh, I'm looking to be connected with business owners who would like to raise their profile. Memberships start from as little as 99 Australian dollars for the year. Thank you. Thanks, Jane. Paul. Hey there, guys. My name is Paul Woodward. I am from Superannuation and Insurances. I am your personal insurance expert. And I help people out with personal insurance such as life insurance, income protection insurance, and trauma insurance. Um, if you can't, if you lose your ability to earn an income, how do you support yourself? If you want to know how, let me know. My name is Paul Woodward from Superannuation and Insurances. Thanks, Paul. Peter, how are you going? Thanks, Fred. Hello, everybody from a very hot and wet Thai village. My name is Peter Beckenham, and I am passionate about working with online solopreneurs, in particular coaches and service providers who are darn good at what they do, but they just can't convert leads into prospects and prospects into customers. So I show them how to avoid chasing leads, how to avoid using sales scripts, now to have conversations with potential clients that make them feel pretty special. In so doing, you've got a much better chance of converting them. That's what I'm all about. Thanks, Fred. Thanks, Peter. And just reminding everybody to drop your details in the chat so people can connect with you. Roz, would you like to go next? Sure. Thanks, Fred. Uh, so hi, everyone. I'm Roz Lockley. My business is called Communiques, and I am a mediator and a conflict coach. So I help people who are in a relationship that is not going as well as they would like. So they're thinking about um, maybe separating or divorce and willing to try to learn to communicate with this person rather than spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on law legal fees, buying a new home to accommodate the children, plus all the emotional costs that come with separation. If you know anyone who is in that situation or even um, marriage counsellors um, who might be dealing with people who are, who are wanting to stay but things aren't going well, please contact me, Ros Lockley Communiques. Thanks, Ros. Helen from the other side of the ditch. Yes, I'm on the other side of the ditch. Yeah, up in the north of Northland, <clears throat> north of Auckland. Um, yeah, I actually help people, particularly if you're working on Facebook, how to generate leads. Um, we can spend many hours trying to find leads through groups, so I have a system where you can do it automated. And one thing I like about it is that you need to know once you set your message out whose inbox it's going to go, <clears throat> and which is actually how I became friends with Fred because my message went into Fred's box. Um, I also co-host two networking groups. One is the HMP, Happy Neighbourhood, um, and also the B&G. And for example of that, 
uh, my message went into an inbox. I then became co-host of that. And then I was already a member of the BNG or co-hosting. I introduced the founder of the BNG, Biohacking Networking Group, um, to HMP. And through that, because of Biohacking Networking Group, we have got linked with Live Vantage for health because health is very important to us, and we have Grant Cardone sales. So that's part of the HMP. And that's all because of the autopilot connection of my go cards that I use. Thanks, Helen. Chet, would you like to go next? Yeah, I'll just make it very brief because I'm still in the process of I, understanding this whole concept. But I'm a... Uh, my name is Chet Chesney. I have been uh, living in Los Angeles for the past uh, many years, and um, I've been an entrepreneur all my life. And uh, one of the uh, latest missions which I have been working on is is cryptocurrency and uh, how to communicate to people to get involved and understand the world of cryptocurrency, especially in nowadays because things are changing fast and the only vehicle that that the world has is the involvement of cryptocurrency and understanding it and this is what i have done i've managed to break down things in in, in small little pieces and break it down and explain to people exactly how they can benefit from from this information and in turn uh, be able to make money passively, not actively, but passively. And this is basically is my quest, which I've been doing for the past, I would say, a couple of years now. And uh, it has been an interesting uh, mission, but uh, finally I'm getting through to people and communicating my benefits to them where they can, in turn, go ahead and um, benefit themselves from that information. So uh, I'll leave my information in the, in the chat box. Thank you. Thanks, Chet. And uh, I guess it's my turn now. Um, most of you, well, all of you know what I do, but I'll just uh, explain it for the listeners. Uh, my name's Fred Gillen. I run a digital agency called More Marketing Ideas, and I help business with their online presence. So whether that's optimizing their websites, setting up their email campaigns, creating SMS campaigns, which is the flavor of the month at the moment, or just setting up an, a CRM system so they can maintain contact with their clients and keep track of exactly what conversations they're having and make sure that they follow up with people when they need to follow up. So if anybody's interested in automating their systems of communication, taking a word from Roz, um, then I can help them do that exactly. And uh, my details will be in the chat and I'll be underneath the, um, the video here, if you're watching it on YouTube, as we will put everybody's details in here as well. So um, with with that, I'm just contemplating what, what I'll talk about. And like Jay says, I've gone a little bit by the seat of my pants. But um, one of the things I think we all do, and I, I'm probably um, one, of the succumb, one of the people that succumbs to it, is that uh, we tend to get caught up in shiny objects or doing something that's not really income generating. Um, and I'm just wondering what, you know, what people do in their day or if they keep track of what they do in their day. And what what started a conversation was I was in another room and they were talking about um, a nutrition talking to one of the clients and they were asking him how many times he ate. <laughs> and one of the things he said was he said, oh, he started to think about it and he said, oh, probably twice a week he eats chocolate. So she gave him a task and she said, for the next week, I want you to write down every single thing you eat. And I mean every single thing. And it's not to punish you or do anything else. It's just to track what you actually do. So he actually did that. And to cut the story short, what it ended up being was when he actually reiterated what he'd taken notes of for the week, it turns out that he was eating chocolate every day of the week. But when he first thought about it, when he was asked a question, he was actually doing it two days a week in his mind's eye. So he didn't realize until he actually took note of exactly what he was doing. And the reason I brought that up was I think we're all in a similar boat and we all think we're being productive every day. We all think we're doing lots of things. And I'm, I'm included in that. I get way late. I go off on tangents. Um, I don't really 
do what I should be doing in order to generate income. And that's really most the reason most of us are in business. Yes, we're here to help people, but we're also here to generate income. And another um, session I was on last week was where there was a multimillionaire guy on and he was talking about, um, somebody asked him what he does on a daily basis and how does he get to that level of being, you know, a, a multi-million dollar earner on a, on a regular basis in a semi-passive thing. And he said, well, it's not passive. He said he does prospecting eight hours a day and he does delivery two hours a day. So he's working 10 hours every day on his business, in his business, so that he can generate $2 million a year. So he's actually, you know, and he gave some tips on what he was doing. And one of the things he said he was doing was he was sending out 500 now, not just him, but his team was sending out 500 emails a day to new prospects. So if you want to earn $2 million a year, that's probably what you've got to do. But then you can step that back, obviously, and look at what you would be nice earning and then pull those numbers back. But it's important that we all get into a habit of doing stuff that's income generating. And I think I've got a screen. Let me just check. That's a good point. Oh, yep. sorry. No, that's that's fine. So here's a here's a slide that I've, like and it just gives you an illustration of things. And I'm I'll have I'm going to create this spreadsheet for myself anyway. And once I do that I'll create a link and share it with everyone so they can get access to it. Um, but it basically gives you some of the things that, you know, really what, if you look at the top of it, it's just got a date, you know, um, what did you do in the day? Like what took up your energy for the day? The other bit across, if you go across, it says non-SEO activities. And what it means by that is like what, um, what you shouldn't be doing, you know, what you can probably outsource, what you can get somebody else to do if you're income generating. So it's just really ideas of categorizing things that you should be doing and things you shouldn't be doing, or at least things that you can look at offloading when you get to a level where you can afford a VA or when you can afford to engage somebody else or whatever. But it, you know, if you write it down, it's the same as anything else. If you write it down, then you're going to remember some of it and you're going to take action to um, remedy the issue. If you just leave it in your head and you think about it, you'll be like eating the chocolate. You'll think, oh, I'm only doing that two days a week. And in fact, you're actually probably doing it every day of the week. And these are tasks that you could help. So I'm happy to share this, with, you know, as I said, when I create the actual spreadsheet, this is just a slide that we created. Um, and it's the, the the group that I was listening to or a group called um, Prospecting On Demand. That's what the PD, POD stands for. So, but I'll recreate this and just put it up online and I'll, I'm going to start filling out mine over the next month and just see what it does. Because the old story is if you keep doing what you're doing, you keep going to get what you're getting. So unless you change your actions, um, then nothing will change. So um, I'll just leave that up on the screen and open it up for discussions or feedback. Yes, Paul. Well, there's... Um... Two things. The first one is um, it's also a good idea to do a money order like this to see how much money you, you are spending on a daily basis. And you'll probably be quite shocked at how much money actually goes towards things like, such as coffee and, and things like that. So it's when you when you can see what you're spending your money on, you can actually start diverting that money to other resources and things like that. Another thing, when I first started in financial planning, the guy that introduced me to financial planning, I mean, he's a multimillionaire. He lives in ball clues on the wall, so brand new Mercedes, why I said, why I've had a brand new Mercedes, that kind of thing. And his advice to me was that if I had 20 appointments in my book a week, that was equivalent, that will, that was equivalent to making a hundred thousand dollars income per annum. This was back in 2000. If I had 25 people on the book, it'll be 250, uh, it'll be $200,000 per annum. And, um, you know, I followed that advice. I never managed to quite get 20 um, people into the book, right, per week. But, um, it, it was amazing how quickly it took my income to a six figure sum just by trying to, um, do what he said, get at least 50 people into the book a week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a personal 
accountability thing in it and to your plan, you know, how many people are going to prospect today and then get them in the pipeline. And those who say yes, what's the next step? And those who say yes, what's the next step, you know, and follow them through. I yeah, think there's a, I, I, I just want to say there's actually something bigger at play that's that's happening is um when when you're doing that prospecting, right, okay, um you're actually also sending out um you know, going back to thinking grow rich, that's the energy you're sending out and that's the energy that will be attracted back to you. And sometimes you will get prospects that will come out of, well, I didn't prospect in that area, but you'll start finding people coming from all different walks of life because um, it's an energetic thing. What you send out is what you get back. Well, people get attracted to your energy. <clears throat> As you said, what you're putting out, you know, and that reflects in your voice and how you how you you're doing your your pitch for want of a word, okay, um, and and that area. So um, so they attract to you and they buy into your energy. Yeah, Peter's just shared a the a link in the chat, which I'll obviously check out after the event or after this event. But I think that, like what I was getting at with the, the the sheet I just showed was it's it's unless we know what we're doing and quantify what we're doing, you can't understand what you need to do. You know, so if you're if you don't like what Paul was saying, if you don't know how much money you're spending or where you're spending it, um, you're never going to be able to save. You're never going to be able to invest because your money will just go through that sieve and it just disappears. And the same with your time, like your time is the most precious thing that we've all got. You can't get it back. Once it's spent, it's spent. So unless you know what you're doing with your time, you can't complain about your business not growing. Yeah. You know, because you've got to be proactive in doing stuff. Yes, Ross? I found with money for me that I need to, if I put money aside every week, then I never miss it. But if I try to keep money and not spend it when I've got it, then I find that really hard. For me, the takeaway from what you've just said is I need to do the same with my business. If I want to reach people, then I need to do those activities first. And then once that time's gone, I I won't miss it and, be, and it will produce more business for me rather than when I've done all of these other things, then I can do the things that generate income or prospects or whatever. So. That's yeah, my and takeaway. I, yeah, and, and like I, you know, like I do a lot of research in what I'm doing, and that's my excuse. I say it's research, right? Because I'm learning a lot, and I do. You know, I pick up things like this, and I, I go to a lot of other networking groups, and go to what you know, um, other webinar sessions, and all the rest through the week, and, and I pick up clients through it. But really, is that where my focus should be? You yeah. know, am I better off going out and just? And I think I've talked myself into what I need to do, but am I better off actually going out and meeting more people and using the knowledge I've already got rather than always seeking more? Because that's what I do. Like I want to learn more all the time. I want to just absorb all this new information and make sure I'm ahead of the tech and that I can show people, you know, what I've learned. But is that doing my business justice? Is that well, giving me the returns I want? Shiny objects. Yeah. Red. That's actually a really good question, Fred, because that's what I have been starting to look at myself. I've actually been away this week, last week, of doing a manual job helping a friend and painting a house, actually. But it made me start thinking. It's like, well, you know, I spend a lot of time on this computer, but how much money am I really generating? Because for that reason, you know, I'm going to network meetings, I'm having one-on-ones just to sort of get to know people. And and as you say, like you start looking at listening to videos and listening to this and that because you always wanted to improve yourself. But yeah, I think we do really got to stop and look and say, well, we need to be generating leads and then adding here yeah, is what are we doing to actually earn that income, not just do all our studies and listening. 
Yeah, so I've got three comments to make. Now, the first one is about ROS um, and the money. Um, if you've got the money in your wallet, you're going to spend it. <laughs> as simple as that, right? Um, so if, if you're looking at saving money, um, it's it's got to not be in your wallet. It's got to be out of sight. Um, the second thing is something about what Fred was saying, and uh, I forgot what that was, and <laughs> Helen was... And Helen was talking about, um, uh, uh, she was talking about how much time are you actually um, spending actually building your business. And again, it gets back to the time audit. If you actually did a time audit and you got stopwatch and you turned it on for when you actually are prospecting a client and turned it off when you finish prospecting a client. You'll be shocked that you will be lucky if you're spending 18 minutes a day doing that. Wow. Um, yeah, you know, somebody actually did that. Um, uh, that uh, so people are building businesses on 18 minutes of proper work a day. So uh, it's not a lot. Uh, you don't actually have to do um, a lot of work. So imagine if you made that half an hour, how what what that would do to your business, right? Yeah. If you just if you just say I said this half now and you just go on the phone making the phone calls, prospecting, yeah. You know it's interesting, Paul, because um, I I waste a lot of time shiny objects. Fred does the same thing as you, okay. But um, what I have is that as something a principle that I never walk away from is that I reach out to twenty people every day. Yep. Every single day, without question, okay? And it's easy. I mean, it's no big deal, right? And I reach out to them. They may be people I'm connected with. They may be new people I'm connecting with. They could be on LinkedIn. They could be on Facebook. doesn't really matter to me. Because one of the biggest problems I find for people is they haven't got enough people in the pipeline to talk to in the first place. It doesn't matter how good you are. If you get no one to talk to, you're dead. So, so if you can reach out to people and feel comfortable in doing it, then you then you've got most of these things nailed. Yeah, yeah I, I I had a mentor in um, and, and another financial planner mentor. He actually every morning, uh, even though he's built a massive business, every morning from seven to nine, he's cold calling. It's actually in his diary. He's set aside his diary. Seven to nine, he's on the phone cold calling, and he's been doing that for a long time. And he's you know, massive. He's yeah, massive business. It's just having that discipline that you talk about, Peter. Yeah, I mean, some of these are cold calls. Some of them are not. I mean, I just make sure I do 20 every day. That's all, right? Get yeah. in contact with 20 people. So do you set a specific time for that, Peter, or do you just yeah, make sure I do. you've done it up through that? I do it every day. Every day between when we finish this session. That's what I'm doing, Fred. Okay. For the next hour maximum. And I can do it, by the way, in about 20 minutes be quite frank with you, because I do it all with voice clips. I've just put a... The idea is to simply make people feel special that you know you that you notice them, something that's personal to them. I I can't automate it because it's personalized to me. I don't need to automate it because it doesn't take that long to do it anyway. Yeah. No, no, 20, I mean 20 contact 20 people a day or even even if you take it to 50, you don't need to automate that stuff. Like you may need to look at automating follow-ups and stuff down the track. But the initial mm -hmm. contacts, um, you're always better off. Like I, I do the same, not as much as I should, but I jump on the phone as quickly as I can or a Zoom call now. You know, it used to be on the phone, so you'd ring people and talk to them. But now if you get them on a Zoom call, it's I think it's a mm -hmm. lot better on a Zoom call because it's face-to-face -face as well as the conversation over the phone. So people get a, a better understanding of what you do. So um, I, I think it's really ways, Look for ways to make it feel special. Yeah. Okay. Look, um, you've got to know your stats, right? Um, there's a story about the taxi driver. Every time you hopped into the cab, he would just move a bead across, mm. right? You know, one of those old counters. And somebody said, why are you doing that? He says, I know that I've got to do these, this many trips a day because I know my average income I make from that. And if I work um, for nine months, I can take three months off. So every day he knew he needed to take 20 passages or, or whatever it was. Now, just knowing your stats. Like Peter knows his stats, 20, 
If you made that 25, you'd probably double his um, income. Mm. There's a challenge for you, Peter. Let's let's double your income. Instead of doing 20, do 25. Let's see if it works. Thank you, Paul. I'm a lazy bugger. <laughs> oh, it's only five more. You said it was easy. Just, yeah, it is. It is. You you I don't have an issue with that. You've done the whole, Peter. You've done the whole. That's the challenge for Peter. Let, let, let's have Peter um, come back to us next week and tell us how we went with 25 instead of 20. That's fine. Don't take me another three or four minutes. The question is, do I really want to do it? The answer is yes. I see the other thing. Peter, you've been challenged. You want to double your income, Peter. <laughs> I think another good uh, thing would be if you had chose and worked with an accountability partner yeah. so that they um, give you a slap on the knuckles if you only did 19 instead of 20, you know. Mm -hmm. um, what happened to the 20th one, you know? Um, <clears throat> yeah. from there. So if you got someone to report back to, and you're holding them accountable for their tasks as well, it can it strengthens you. Yeah, I agree with that because with my B&G, I do that to have accountability call every morning. Yeah, I think yeah. When, when you look at those numbers, like Peter said, like it's easy to do 20, right? And But if you look at those numbers over the week, that's 100. Mm. Right? It's five. So over the month, it's 400 people that you've made contact with, now, whether it's new contacts or just reinvesting in existing contacts or whatever it is. And that's pretty important because it's a lot easier to sell to somebody you know or somebody that knows you than it is to sell to a cold client, right? So if you re-engage with existing people and they're part of those 20, then it's a good opportunity. Like how many more clients would be good for you in a month? Would it be, you know, one a day or would it be one a month? You know, it depends on what mm -hmm. you're looking for. So you're talking to 100 people or, you know, 400 people in a month. Um, What's the chance of it getting one or two new clients? And it, would that be worth it? For me, the answer is definitely yes. Right. And not only that, Fred, if, you, if you're trying to do it without a CRM, you're wasting your time. I didn't have to, have to pay <laughs> for that, Peter, but thank you. Mm. <laughs> and so, Peter, Peter going way, back to motivation for you to do it, you're doing, think of it that you're doing us a favor as well, because you could report back next week and say how an extra five contacts every day how that's impacting your business and that'll motivate okay. all of us okay. to start doing even just five. Just just for interest me, I've got to go start these calls, right? But just before I go, um every week I do an accountability call to my family. Okay. I create a video for my family. They know what I'm trying to do. They know what my mission is for both them. And for the village, I've got a charity within our village structure here. And I do a, a feedback session to them so they know what I've done this week and what I'm hoping to achieve and what I have achieved. And they give me feedback like, Dad, get off your butt. Or why'd you do that, Dad? Or whatever it is. And that, to me, is extremely valuable because one, they're, they're buying into the reason why I'm doing business in the first place, right? Because it's them. And secondly, they're starting to understand the real guts of what it is to run a business rather than all the theory about it. So, food for thought. So you're a good dad too. Pardon? You're a good dad too. Well, I, I enjoy doing that. I mean, it's, it's just a 10-minute video where I tell them, what, this is what I did this week and this is, what I'm, this is why I did it and this is what we got as a result of it, blah, 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 right? So there's no secrets. I mean, I've got a granddaughter, Paul, right? A granddaughter who comes in to check my calendar in the morning, <laughs> right? To see what I'm doing. Now, to be fair, she wants to know when grandpa's available, but she checks it out anyway, right? <laughs> All right, guys, I go, go. It's been great. Have, yeah. a, have a great week. And Peter, I look forward to finding out how the extra five. Okay, mate, no problem. I've got to go too. I have to go too. But <laughs> lovely to see you all. Um, yeah. See you again soon. Thanks, guys. Yeah. It's been really great. Appreciate your time. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Bye, everyone. I need to go too. Get some stuff done. <laughs>